The Outpost Lodge was built in 1938 by a University of Chicago professor, Clarence Hodge, and he and a group of investors came up here and developed the, uh, the Outpost. Welcome to the new Fly Fisher. I'm your host, Jenna McEwen, and on today's show, we are in beautiful Algoma country at the Outpost Lodge. We're going to be fishing for smallmouth bass in creeks and lakes, and if we're lucky, we might even get to fish for rainbow and brook trout in the creeks and the rivers. It's gonna be a great episode with lots of instruction, so stay with us. I will catch these all day. That is what you're in for on this episode. The new Fly Fisher is supported by Destination Ontario, Algoma Country, That Real, Orvis Fly Fishing, Trout Unlimited, Real Products, Oscar Blues Brewery, Global Rescue, Adipose Boatworks. Algoma country is one of my favorite regions to fly fish. Situated in the center of Northern Ontario, Canada, Algoma is known worldwide for its incredible multi-species fishing opportunities, a true fly angler's dream. Plentiful in rivers, creeks, and lakes, the Algoma region even borders several of Ontario's largest bodies of water like Lake Huron. This week, we are the guests of Jim and Anne, owners of the Outpost Lodge, which is located just north of Thessalon, Ontario. This drive to location, which is within two hours of the US-Canada border, is ideal for anglers who are searching for a wide variety of fishing opportunities, all within less than a 10 minute drive from the main lodge. My original plan for this trip had been to fish the creeks and the rivers in the area for rainbow and brook trout. However, mother nature had another plan. Throughout our stay at the Outpost Lodge, we received one to two inches of rain per day, which in turn put the water levels in the local creeks and rivers over the banks. 
High water levels are usually detrimental to trout fishing, as the fish will be spread out and less likely to hold in one location to feed. Despite this initial setback, I was not discouraged. One of the best things about the location of the Outpost Lodge is its proximity to several different bodies of water and the area's reputation for massive smallmouth bass. We were guided this week by lodge owner Jim Kehoe, who was able to take us to some of his favorite locations to fish for smallmouth bass. Uh, we're here at uh, Axe Lake Launch on Tunnel Lake, five minutes away from uh, the Outpost. It's a stained water reservoir. Uh, with uh, 14 miles of lake from this point that we fish for smallmouth walleye, lots of big bass. So we're hoping today to uh, uh, get some of those post-spawn bass and uh, thinking that they're probably going to be heading to some of the points and rock piles. So we'll uh, concentrate there and uh, see what we can find. So the key I think right now is going to be varying up my retrieve. I think based on the cold weather they're going to be taking a little bit slower um, but right now I'm still not quite sure what's going to work in terms of retrieve so I'm going to vary it up, do short strips, do long strips, slow, fast, kind of see what's really going to get the fish to take. A bite and another one, here we go, here we go, that's a fish, right, oh, kicking. Right there at that drop off to the, ah. Oh, the bites are coming really right there at the drop off to the eight, 10 feet of water that Jim said is right here off this uh, rocky point. Oh, I'm excited, I need, to get the, I need to get a fish in the boat. I'm gonna get my fly back out there and see. It's always important to go in, sharpen your hooks after you've ca caught a couple rocks or logs or even after if you, if you catch a big fish, checking your fly and checking your hook to make sure they're still in working condition is crucial to making sure you don't lose those fish. Fish on. There we go. This fish is fighting well. I haven't had a look at it yet, but it's feeling like it might be a good sized bass. Or, I don't know, let's see. That's a good size fish. Yeah, oh, come here, buddy. Come here, buddy. There we go. That is a decent sized bass. Look, all righty. Hook pops out. Nice and easy, and it's a beauty fish. The Outpost Lodge was built in 1938 by a University of Chicago professor, Clarence Hodge. And he and a group of investors, uh, five of them, uh, came up here and developed the, uh, the Outpost. Uh, four cottages and the main lodge with running water. At the Outpost, we have uh, accommodations for 
um, any number of people from a single person up to eight to ten in, in the cottages. Uh, we have six cottages from one to four bedrooms. Um, they all have a full kitchen, full bathroom, four-piece bath. Um, they have fireplaces and automatic heat as well as the fireplaces. Um, and they're all separated by trees, so they're all quite private. Um, and so people can come up and take care of their own, you know, food or, or, you know, needs, or they can come into the lodge and eat with us. I've been coming to the Outpost Lodge since they bought the place. First once a year, and then twice a year with the guys in the springtime. Now for 30 years, last year I came up three times, spring, summer and fall. I loved it. It was great. What keeps bringing me back year after year is, is the setting. It's a, it's a gorgeous area. Uh, it's, it's very easy to get to. You know, a lot of people I think in Canada you've got to do a fly-in trip to, to be successful and that's not the case here. It's, it's very easy access and uh, it's uh, lots of different lakes and bodies of waters, uh, rivers, and streams to, uh, to take advantage of. Despite the high water levels, Jim suggested we try fishing one of the small creeks near the lodge. The pools here are known to hold trout, smallmouth bass, and occasionally even pike. Fish on! Okay, so... I've hooked into a couple fish, but this is the uh, first one I've properly set the hook on. I think the problem before was I really wasn't uh, setting the hook hard enough. What? Oh, looks like a good sized fish. I'm gonna try and back up here. Little scrapper. Yep. Oh. Awesome, now I'm gonna try and get my fly back in there and see if we can find some trout. They've got some nice calm water and I've really been getting lots of hits when I let my fly swing through and at the bottom of the pool. That seems to be where they're striking the most. So I'm going to continue this technique and hopefully pull out a nice trout. Oh, I think that that doesn't seem to be fighting like a uh, like a trout. Let's see, that's a bass. I <laughs> was letting my uh, Letting my line or my flies float all the way to the bottom. So I've got a nice small mouth bass here looking for trout, but nice fish, and I'm just going to. Ooh, there he goes. During this trip, I principally used a 9-foot, 6-weight rod. For fly lines, I mainly used an intermediate sinking line to get my flies down in the water column. Of course, I also came prepared with a floating line if topwater action was possible for the bass. For the trout, I would recommend you bring 4 and 5-weight rods with floating lines and possibly a sink tip. The flies that worked this week were rabbit strip woolly bugger, beaver and tan woolly bugger, and olive sparkle woolly bugger. While I did bring other flies, these were the most successful with the bass. Despite the rainy and overcast weather, Jim and I decided to head out on the main lake to see if we could find some active fish. So we're back on the main lake today, and I think what we're going to do is I'm gonna rig up the six weight rod. We're gonna use an intermediate line and try to fish the deeper water just past the drop-offs. The post-spawn female bass are going to be sulking. They're going to be kind of getting away from the stress of the spawn, and they're going to be a little bit deeper. So we're going to fish that deeper water, hopefully find some active big smallmouth. Oh, 
Yeah, look, see the sun's coming, trying to come through. Well, we've uh, gone through the Narrows and come into this uh, east arm of Jobama Gishik. And there's a large uh, flat section over here on this edge here. It's uh, quite the drop off. Instead of 12 and 15 foot of uh, uh, water, uh, here we're, we're in 20, but yet just 100 feet from here, it, it, it would be 10 or 12 foot deep. So this, uh, this drop off is an important one where the, uh, the bass will drop back into to uh, recuperate after spawning. Okay, so we've come to one of these drop-off ledges and there's lots of great structure. And uh, it's right in that deep water that I've seen a couple fish and now we have found a nice bass. So let's get this, oof, kicky guy into the net. There we go. Yeah. Kicked, kick to him. Let's see here. Nope. Hold on, little guy. Go. Beautiful red eye there. Okay, and this is right there in the deeper water, right past the drop off amongst the uh, fallen trees. We've got some really nice structure down there. So let's get this guy back in. Hopefully we can find some more active fish. So it really has been working using the weighted fly. We're using a dark colored fly with a little bit of flash to it and slowly working the deeper water. That's where those bass are hanging out. So I'm gonna get my fly back in the water find some more fish. This is so great. We had landed some amazing bass already on this trip, but I was still on the hunt for a really massive post-spawn female bass. When another weather system came through the region on our last afternoon, Jim suggested we go to a small lake a quick five minute drive from the main lodge. It's known for being the secret honey hole and usually holds some of the biggest bass. And needless to say, I was not disappointed. I'm gonna let my fly sink though, so I cast in, stripped it back, someone, oh, there we go. Another take and it's out again. Goodness, I didn't, I, oh, there, there's a small pike who is after that fly. But I was drifting it back, someone hit it, popped out. But the key is when sometimes if your fly pops out, let it sink back down, especially if you're fishing for pike, even for really aggressive bass, they might hit it again if they're hungry or if they're really aggressive. Fish on. Woo, that was a hard hit too. I'm not sure what kind of fish that is. There are smallmouth bass in this lake, but there are also Pike, that's a bass. And wah, there we go. Yes. Fish on. And that's, I thought that's a decent sized fish from what I can see. Holy, can you grab the net, Jim? Oh my goodness, so we're right here on this boggy marshland and something smacked my fly and that is a good sized bass. So let's get this guy, ho oh, ho 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 ho, yes! Woo, that is a great looking bass. Woo, woo, woo. Yes, all right, let's get the fly out and 
see how this fish is doing. <gasps> okay. Beautiful fish. Gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. Here we go, nice, fast. Very, very cool. All right. This seems to be a great area with all this structure. I'm gonna get him back in the water. Man, that was awesome. And that was such a great fish, such a great fight, and just a true testament to the kind of big, smallmouth bass that you can find in this area of Algoma. I've had an amazing week here at the Outpost Lodge. Despite difficult weather and high waters, I was able to hook into some really beautiful smallmouth bass. Nice fish, and I'm just going to... Ooh, there he goes. That is a great looking bass. If you'd like to learn more about fishing in Algoma, the Outpost Lodge, or our show, visit us on the web at www.thenewflyfisher.com. From all of us here at The New Fly Fisher, thanks for watching and we'll see you soon. Hi, I'm Mark Melnick from The New Fly Fisher Television Show. If you enjoyed that video, do me a favor, hit the like button and subscribe today. Also, we're uploading new videos all the time, so hit the bell to be notified when the next one goes up. The new Fly Fisher is supported by Destination Ontario, Algoma Country, That Real, Orvis Fly Fishing, Trout Unlimited, Rio Products, Oscar Blues Brewery, Global Rescue, Adipose Boatworks, Works,